for many years, uh, the whole cotton industry, we believe we do as good a job as anybody in framing the debate and justifying why we need farm policy, why it makes economic sense. But the fact of the matter is that agriculture in general is becoming smaller all the time. And when you think about cotton, is even smaller than all of agriculture. So we've always tried over the years to build coalitions across commodity lines uh, and try to, to do things bigger and together. But the fact of the matter is that when you look at the number of legislators in the U.S. Congress that are directly related to agriculture, it's not many, but when you look at cotton, it's even smaller. If we think about from our area, we have at most three congressmen uh, from the high plains and the rolling plains of Texas. Well, it takes 218 to pass a bill in the U.S. House. So it just makes perfect sense to me that we have to become more politically active. And so as a producer, you know, it's very difficult to do anything on your own, but banding together, supporting organizations like the National Cotton Council and Plains Cotton Growers and other regional cotton grower associations is important, but it's also to be politically active. And that's why we have things like the PCG Political Action Committee and the National Cotton Council Committee for Advancement of Cotton. We have to be able to reach out beyond members that just are directly affected by cotton. I would say the, the simple aspect of a greater understanding of farm policy and the importance of it is it's a very affordable program throughout the U.S. that affords everyone the ability to have a safe, affordable, abundant food and fiber supply. And it's, it's no different when you look at, um, say, affordable health care products. The reason we have affordable health care products is because there is government involvement and there is programs that help make those those supplies affordable. No different than automobile insurance or homeowners insurance. Those tools are utilized to protect the consumer themselves in the event they see catastrophic disaster. That's very much the same aspect of farm policy for producers specifically. Those tools are in place to allow them to weather whether it's price systemic decline or incidents related to mother nature through uh, utilizing crop insurance that allows producers to rebound uh, from those incidents that are outside their control and still be able to, to go to their lender, acquire financing, put a new crop in the ground, and still allow us to be a powerhouse in the world market, in the global market, um, from continuing to grow crops and export them rather than becoming an importer of crops. I think it is imperative that we put a face with a voice. Because we as organizations, you know, as you mentioned, we spend a lot of time in D.C. advocating on their behalf. But when you have a producer who is telling his or her story from a personal level, that makes it even more real to whoever you're talking to, whether it is a member of Congress, whether it's a member of the media, whether it's just people in, in a circle if you're out and about somewhere. Because you never know where you're going to come upon these opportunities to help somebody understand how important agriculture is. We're talking about family farms here. We're talking about livelihoods. We're talking about putting food on the table for our own families. And so that makes that message even more powerful whenever you're trying to talk about just how important farm policy is because this goes back to the family farm and uh, I can't emphasize that point enough.